In two previous videos, we took a look at some rigging solutions for your characters. These rigging solutions are found here. Under this drop-down, I'm going to select Rigging. And we looked at, under Skeleton, both the Quick Rig solution and the Human IK solution, both of which create very similar rigs. Now, this particular example that we're looking at was rigged using the quick rig solution. Rigs are what allows us to pose and animate our characters. And with this character here, for instance, I can grab these controls such as the hips, which I can move around or rotate. Uh, I can also grab controls such as the uh, shoulder or elbow. The various controls on this rig are um, manipulated by using either translates or rotates. It really depends on which part of the rig we're looking at. And by posing this character uh, and then setting animation keys, I can animate the character. But what we're going to take a look at in this video is how we can apply mocap data or motion capture data to the quick rig as well as the human IK rig in Maya. Now, there's various different technologies for uh, recording motion using motion capture. Uh, we won't get into the details of how the motion is recorded, but what we will do is take some of this motion captured data and apply it to this rig. And to start out, we'll go to the Human IK tab, which is generally found here. Now, currently, I only have my channel box, the modeling toolkit, and the attribute editor here. Um, but to bring up the Human IK uh, tab, I'm going to click on this little figure found here. And the Human IK uh, window will open up here. And I'm simply going to drag it and dock it into the side here of my user interface. Notice that we actually have a couple tabs. We have this definition tab, which refers to the skeleton uh, that, the that the rig is driving. Uh, this is particularly important when you're creating your rig. And then we also have the controls. And this small little interface here is a handy way of selecting the various controls on our character when we want to pose or animate it. For instance, if I click on this green sphere here, which is the hips, it'll select the uh, hip control or I can select the right shoulder, which can either be rotated to pose it, or I can actually use uh, translate as well to pose it from the clavicle. Uh, you can pick all these various controls from this interface when posing your character, or of course you can select them simply by clicking on them uh, on the character itself. Now, we're not going to be hand animating this character, but applying motion capture to it instead. So let's look at where we can find some available motion capture data. We can go to Windows, General Editors, Content Browser, and then in the Content Browser, you'll find Animation, Motion Capture, FBX. And here we have a number of different motion capture files that we can try applying to our character. So let's go ahead and try out a couple of these. And what I'm going to do is try the flip animation first. So I'll just double click on it. And if we zoom out, you'll see that there's actually another skeleton in my scene uh, created at a different scale than my character here. Uh, and if we play the animation, 
you'll see that we have a flip. So let's see how we can apply that flip to our character here. So what I'd like you to take note of is these two uh, areas right here where we have character and source. Character, which I named Q, uh, is my character, uh, my character's rig found here. The source, on the other hand, is uh, where I can apply the flip animation here, that will be the source. This will be the source. And this is my character. So character Q, currently the source is the control rig, which is the actual rig applied to the character. Uh, I'm going to click on the drop down here. And because I brought that flip animation into my scene, uh, I can select it as a source and apply. Now, so you can see this a little bit better. I'm going to go over here to show none. That will make it so that we see nothing in our viewport. And then I'm going to go to show polygons so that we're not looking at the skeleton. Now, you may notice that there may be uh, some skinning issues here that I might uh, need to resolve, but let's go ahead and play this animation and see what it looks like applied to our character here. So I'll click on the play button. And now our character is doing a flip. Let's go ahead and try a, another uh, animation. And I'm going to go ahead and say show all so that we can see once again uh, joints in here. And we'll pick another motion capture file. So I'll once again go to my con uh, content browser and pick one of these options over here. Uh, I haven't actually looked at all of these. Uh, I haven't tried them all out. Uh, but let's go ahead and pick one that might be interesting. Uh, we could try, for instance, the... Let's try the push over motion capture file. So I'll double click on that. Once again, it'll bring it into our scene. Now we have two of these motion capture um, files in here. You can see the uh, pushing one is this one here. And we'll go ahead and apply that one to our character. So. Uh, once again, I'll come over here. My character is Q. My source is flip. We'll change it to pushover. Once again, I will hide all and then just show. Let's see, show none, sorry. And then I'll show polygon so that we're looking at just the polygon mesh. And we'll go ahead and rewind and play and see how this animation looks on our character. And there it is. We'll try one more. Show all. Go ahead and bring another motion capture file in here. Maybe this time we'll try something like running. Uh, run fast, we could try that one. You can see the character in here running. It's this one here. Once again, I'll come over here to this interface and under source, we'll change it from pushover to run fast. And let's try it out.
and there it is. Now, one thing I should mention about watching animations in Maya is that we need to make sure that we're playing it at the proper speed. This can be found here, uh, this little orange running man. If I open that up, that will open up my preferences. Currently, you'll see that my preference is set to playback speed of 24 frames a second. Uh, but this drop down gives me some other options. What you don't want is to play every frame. Let's see what happens if I play every frame here. Uh, this will probably play the animation too fast. Uh, but let's see. And in fact, it does. Why? Because it's trying to play it as fast as it possibly can. It's not playing it at its proper speed. So when you look at these animations, again, remember to open up your animation preferences and make sure that your playback speed is set to 24 frames a second, or in some cases, 30 frames a second. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to show and we'll show all so that we can see everything in our scene here. And I'm going to show you how you can get your character back to its uh, default position with its rig. Because what you'll notice here is that it actually isn't using the rig any longer. It's simply using the skeleton. The motion capture data has been applied to just the skeleton, not the rig itself. Now, if I don't want to use any of these animations and I want to get my character back into its default T pose with the rig so that I can do my own custom animations, I will once again, uh, once again, go to source and what we'll do is we'll select control rig. That will bring our character back to its T pose, its default state. Uh, and once again, I can start working with the rig itself. Applying motion capture to your characters is really a uh, great way to test the uh, skin weights on your character. And it's just fun to see your character come to life uh, through motion. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.